struggling to unlock the full potential of your product, in this comprehensive tutorial, I'm gonna show you how Heap.io can supercharge your growth. Forget about cumbersome tracking plans, messy data, and endless tracking meetings to figure out how you can add yet another event to your data. Heap does all this behind the scenes for you and transforms your data and makes analysis a breeze. Let's dive right in. Now, Heap.io has been a standard product for many years. Uh, it, it competes with Mixpanel and Amplitude. Uh, but the thing that makes Heap.io famous, or at least well known, is their auto capture. Effectively, you'll install a little snippet in your website or product. You can do something similar for iOS or Android, and it will capture all this data for you. It'll, of course, capture page views, it'll do sessions, it'll capture clicks uh, on the page itself, like element clicks, button clicks. Uh, form submits and a few of other things. And all of this is, is very handy. Now, other tools may have something like this. Google Analytics, for example, has some auto capture. But the way Heap does it, I think, just takes it to another level. If I show you here, this is actually all the auto capture data that Heap collects out of the box. If we scroll down here, you know, we see, of course, page views, the clicks, uh, any kind of changes in inputs and text headers as people are sort of typing. They, you can have a form submission and, of course, a session. But this five events actually capture a lot of the things that users are doing on a website. And of course, we have a bunch of user properties that are captured by default. You know, a bunch of like uh, platform, device type, country, of course, geographic data. Down here, we're gonna have some uh, landing page data, UTM data. For example, initial UTM source, and, and then the last touch UTM source, it can do attribution. And I'll show you how to do that in Heap, which actually pretty, is pretty easy. So there's a bunch of data that you get just by simply adding the little snippet to your product. So if you're a team that perhaps doesn't have as many technical resources, and really what team has enough technical resources, Heap is fantastic. Now, if we look at the platform itself, the other thing that makes this auto capture data really powerful is how you can interact with it. So if you go to data here, we see the events that are coming in, of course, right? The page views and things like that. This is actually just running on my website. But they have this thing called visual labeling. And this allows you to create events from your website itself. So let's launch it. So you get your website and you can see at the very top here, you're either in label mode or navigate mode. If you go to navigate mode, then you can actually just click through your website uh, as it is. You can log in, you can do everything you need. And if you're in label mode, then you're trying to create events. So you see how it kind of hovers, right? With this orange border, you can then go in and for example, you know, let's say this YouTube videos. Let's say you really want to track this specifically. You click it in and it gives you the sort of HTML structure of this element. It shows you how many clicks have happened in the past week. It gives you some suggestions of perhaps other properties you may want to pass. As long as it exists on the website itself, you can capture it. And you may want to limit to maybe specific pages if that if you care about. So you, from there you proceed, you add a name, you might call this, you know, click YouTube video or something like that, maybe a category uh, and anything else you might need, any notes. But again, the powerful here thing is, is if you're doing this, let's say six months after you add a heap, then heap will have six months worth of data for you. So you, you, you don't start from scratch as you do often with a mixed panel or amplitude. You get six months of data because it's already been collecting all these clicks. All this data is there in the raw format. All you have to do is go and label it as you need it. Uh, so this ability to go back in time and get historical data and organize it, I just think is really powerful. You can still send custom events, so you can have anything you want. For example, a custom event with custom event properties. I think in, in a world like Keep, this will make sense for perhaps your most important conversion events. Things like uh, subscription payments, purchases, orders. Maybe you have some things in your CRM you want to bring in, which as an example, uh, Heap also functions as a bit of a light CDP, a customer data platform. If you look at HubSpot, we can see that uh, HubSpot can be, can be set up as a source. That is, you, you can ingest data from HubSpot. And if we look at what we ingest here, HubSpot is actually going to send a bunch of messages, you know, like bounce email and click email, drop email, forward email, and so on. Uh, so as long as you have the same email, you can connect both tools. So this is another way to bring in other data from other systems, like a CRM, an email marketing platform, perhaps a mobile attribution, or something else. So combination of this external tools, maybe some custom events, perhaps from the server uh, for really important conversions, and then everything else on a web platform means you can have a lot of data in a very easy format. That is, you're doing very minimal technical integration here. It all happens behind the scenes or in a few clicks throughout integrations. So I think this is a huge plus for Heap and one of the biggest value propositions, just how easy it is to get started with data and even to make changes as you go along without having to involve your engineers 
yet again in another thread, another meeting, make a ticket, wait two weeks for that ticket to get published to production, and so forth. So it's a lot of velocity, a lot of speed, even if perhaps you don't have as much data as you might if you were to do everything manually. What about analyzing data, right? This is the next obvious next step. You brought a lot of data in. It's really easy, as we can see. Let's look at the analysis. So the first thing is, just like Google Analytics, you actually get a bunch of stuff out of the box. More tools are doing this, which I think is fantastic, because it, it, you don't start with a blank slate. So I've actually not created any special charts here in Heap. You can see that there's already a bunch of stuff that was created for me around primarily the page views and different events. There's actually some dashboards that were created too, just to show a few things. So again, very handy. But if you want to create your own thing, we go here to the top left and do Analyze. And we get a bunch of options here in the top, depending on what, what we want to do. So we have usage over time, funnels, journeys, engagement, acquisition, which is handy to show that in a second. Then we have retention and influence. And all the charts are sort of built in a very similar way, where you choose your specific type of chart you're trying to build. And then down here, down here, then you get to choose the events. Again, this only has the default events, like a session or a page view. If we look at like a session, you can add filters based on all those custom properties. Uh, whether there's, you know, there might be down here, if we go all the way here, right? All the things that Heap is collecting out of the box, the UTMs, the initial country, and, and so forth, right? Lots of things. You can, of course, group them, which is just like a breakdown. You may break, break down sessions by country, for example. Let's try that. And we'll do the initial country. We may compare using segments, if possible. And then we, of course, have our date range and how we want to group it by, maybe do some comparison, full days. Again, pretty standard, relatively easy as you can see. And then down here, we get the data in some kind of line chart. We have, of course, bar charts, tables, maybe donuts, depending on what kind of chart you're using. You can customize it a little bit by adding some specific uh, colors, which I always find actually quite nice to be able to change the colors of the chart to match your brand. So very simple, right? And then, you know, for every chart, you have some extra actions here. You can see that we can export to CSV or Google Sheets. Both require paid plans. Maybe create new, maybe save templates so they can be reused. Uh, all of this is pretty speedy, I would say, right? The, the ability to, to load things. And then here for this specific usage over time, we have a few things like either total events or perhaps just unique users, maybe a conversion rate or some kind of ratio, some kind of formula, maybe user behavior if you look at specific segments. If you look at funnels, we get the sort of standard idea, right? That we're going to take, you know, a session and the page view and so on. Again, if you create custom events, they will be here in your, uh, in your specific dropdown maybe a session funnel, and a lot of the sort of same extra things you can add to a given chart. So very handy. Uh, journeys, of course, for seeing how users navigate through a product. Then we have engagement, where we get to compare a couple events and see how they perform. Acquisition, uh, I also like. Uh, you can actually see basically your, your groupings. In this case, it's taking the initial marketing channel. It's, it's not some groupings for you, and you will be able to uh, edit this right? Maybe able to edit the logic that you're using for this. So this is, again, Google Analytics kind of pioneered this approach that you have rules to, to do your attribution, but you can change them here, which is the, the most important thing. You can create whatever sort of logic you want, channel grouping basically, uh, and then break it down uh, by those channels. If you go here, we have retention, uh, the ability to create a cohort analysis, right, with a start event and, re and return event. You can also have usage interval to understand how frequently people engage with your product. It's a daily frequency, weekly, monthly. And then this is the attribution chart, which I think is actually quite fantastic. You know, you can take, uh, again, any conversion you want. This is pretty simple. Uh, we're going to take marketing channel, uh, maybe do a look back window of one day. That's fine. We have our attribution models here. First touch, last touch, linear, time decay, position base, right? Maybe take a last touch. And then we're going to view the results. And we get a bit of breakdown here. And again, this is actually quite handy, you know, the ability to go through different models with your custom data in sort of different ranges and different uh, abilities is really powerful. Again, Google Analytics kind of made this really popular, but it doesn't give you the same level of flexibility as you get here with Heap and the ability to change things and play around. Because typically in a attribution model, you want to compare. You want to see last touch versus first touch versus linear versus time decay. So you want a way to do this quickly. So again, very, very powerful. So really from data analysis perspective, it's a lot, right? And if you want something much, perhaps more advanced, you're likely going to take it to a data warehouse, which we're going to see in a second. But you have a lot of different charts, a lot of different ways to slice and dice. And again, because you have a lot of data, which is really the sort of prerequisite for any kind of good analysis, I think Heap then takes this over the top uh, and makes the an analysis of what's going on with your product uh, a very easy thing to do uh, and 
relatively fast. What about connecting with other tools? These days, no tool is an island and you need to be able to bring data in and in many cases, take data out. So let's look at the integrations. Now I mentioned earlier that Heap is functioning as a bit of a light CDP, a customer data platform. It is not comparable to a segment.com or in particle that would not be a fair comparison, but it is doing a lot of things and I do find it quite interesting. Now here's the list of all the integrations Heap has uh, from the documentations. And you can see there's quite a few. There's maybe 40 or 50 here. You're gonna see pretty standard options here, you know, under A-B testing, right? We have Optimizely, uh, BWO, you know, we're, we're gonna have Shopify for e-commerce, HubSpot Sales for CRMs, Klaviyo, Iterable, Braze, pretty standard stuff. So depending on what you wanna integrate, you wanna check here if that's available. And if it's not, perhaps a different way of bringing it. You know, for example, if we look at the reverse ETL tools, uh, like the high touch or census options, then typically that kind of allows you to do anything. You know, as long as you take your data out to a data warehouse, like a Snowflake or a BigQuery, and then maybe reverse ETL back into Heap, gives you a lot of flexibility, but this is perhaps a bit more of an advanced use case. That being said, if we look at HubSpot, again, as, as an example, we saw the source before, so we know we can bring in a bunch of events from HubSpot, all this here, and they're sort of linked based on the, on the email of the user. We can also send data to HubSpot. And in this case, we are sending the segment. So we can create custom segments and heap, for example, uh, power users or new users over the last 30 days or users who have not completed the onboarding. And then when those are segments, and then we export those segments out. Typically, when it comes to destinations, you have two types of destination types. You have what are called cohort sync, or in this case, segment sync. You're effectively syncing a list of emails to some other tool, in this case, HubSpot. And then from there, you do something with it, right? Or you might sync it to Facebook and then Facebook will create a Facebook audience. So this is the segment or slash cohort sync, different names for the same thing. The second type is typically event stream. And in this case, you're actually uh, exporting your raw events to another destination. So from what I can see, Heap is primarily cohort or segment sync. So all the kind of destinations it has, which is quite a few, you're typically only syncing the segments or the, the list of emails to create some kind of segment, audience, cohort, wherever you're sending it. Now, this is still very powerful, but it's also powerful when you're able to send uh, raw events. And in fact, when we look at this HubSpot, HubSpot is actually doing an event stream from, from HubSpot into Heap, right? It is sending a bunch of events and then Heap ingests all the events. So you're not able to export the events themselves into most destinations but you will be able to export segments. So from this, again, it's a light CDP. I can see this changing quickly. Uh, I think we're seeing more and more tools add event stream, not just the segment sync, but that's where it stands as right now. Most of the integrations I think are actually quite easy to set up. Typically they work based on some kind of uh, email or perhaps a user ID and it looks for both on both systems. Of course, the data warehouse integrations are going to be straightforward, maybe dependent on the data warehouse itself, like a BigQuery or an S3 or something. Uh, and then you're able to take your data out and then do whatever you want with it in the most flexible way possible. So again, if you're trying to integrate any of these tools, I would expect that perhaps just take a few minutes, a few clicks, maybe some technical help if you're doing something highly technical like a data warehouse. Otherwise, it, it should be pretty straightforward. And for this, I think Heap also becomes quite powerful just as its universe of integrations grows. Finally, let's talk about pricing. The pricing uh, Heap, it's not as clear, you know, they do have a free product. Uh, you get 10K monthly sessions. I would say the sessions tracking for pricing is interesting. Most tools in the space typically track either on event, event volume, or on monthly track users, typically MTUs as they're called. So you don't see too much about monthly sessions, uh, but it's just another way to track it. You kind of have to figure that out. Uh, I could see that you can have more sessions than unique users or events. Again, again, this is probably pros and cons to this approach, but you get 10K on the free plan. And then, you know, the growth and pro plans, uh, typically they will vary depending on session volume. Here's just a quick estimate on it, right? So if we see, for example, uh, 25,000 uh, sessions a month will then play out to about $50, $400 a year or about 560 a month. And again, if we then take this into 62,000 sessions, then it becomes uh, about 10K a year or about 11, uh, about 1,000, 1,100 a month. And then, you know, you sort of max out likely around the 83, maybe 100K monthly sessions. And then there, you sort of have to talk to sales beyond that. But again, this just sort of gives you a, a sense of what you're getting. There's other features I did not fully cover, right? They have session replay, 
uh, heat maps. So they have a few other things I just did not get to. But the core product analytics product, I think, is very strong. It has a lot to do. Uh, and if it makes sense within your stack, uh, especially if you're trying to move fast, you don't want to be hindered by development teams. And trust me, you can be slowed down a lot by development teams. Then Heap just becomes a fantastic choice in that scenario. Very powerful tool and very easy to use. One more thing, if you're ready to finally get more insights out of your data, then my next video is for you. Look at this video here. This is a, a short video on how to turn data into insights. It's only a few minutes long. It's one of the most popular videos on my channel. I highly recommend you check that out next. That being said, my name is Ruben Ugarte. I really hope you enjoyed this overview of Heap. Uh, if you're looking for more content on it, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to make something perhaps a little bit more detailed in depth around how to make the most out of your Heap data. That's all I have for today. Until next time, we'll talk soon.